Hi, I'm Mikhail Tikhamirov, ICPC coach for MIPT teams. We take our preparations for ICPC very seriously and we were happy to have very good results in the last few years. We had world finals medals for the last four years. And we also host uh, ICPC workshops at Moscow IPT and a lot of other locations for teams from all over the world to prepare for ICPC. So here are a few tips for how you can prepare for ICPC competitions. Okay, so you are starting a contest with your teammates and the first thing you do is, of course, you read the statements. And it's really important to read the statements carefully, not miss any single detail because they're all important to understand the problem properly. So take your time, work through every sentence, take a look at the sample cases that are provided to you by the jury and Try to get a really solid understanding of what the problem asks you to do. It is very important to manage your time properly in an ICPC competition. And most importantly, manage your computer time. Do not waste any time at your computer. So when you have an idea for a problem, you think you know how to solve it. Do not just rush to the computer and start writing some code. Take your time again. Try to think of how you're going to approach coding the problem, how you're going to organize your code, what goes before what, and work. maybe even write down some pieces of code or necessary formulas before you start coding so that you really take only the time that you need when you actually get to the computer to write your code. Try not to rush when you're writing the code for one of the problems. Pay attention to every single line, make sure there are no mistakes. And when you're done, when you've coded uh, the program, do not submit right away because it's quite likely that you've made a small mistake and you've missed it. Glance over your code one more time, run tests to make sure it behaves correctly, run the sample cases, produce a few cases of your own maybe smallest cases, maybe some large cases to see if it works fast enough and only submit when you're fairly certain that, uh, that your program is correct because it really pays off to go slow and steady instead of rushing because if you make a mistake you will have to spend time fixing it. Of course it's impossible to never make mistakes and at times you will receive incorrect verdict despite you being absolutely sure that your program is correct. So it's tempting at this time to stay at the computer and try to debug your program line by line. However, the computer time is probably better spent if one of your teammates come in and start working on some other problem. So take a deep breath, print out your code on a piece of paper, sit down and look for a mistake in your code and if you still cannot find a mistake after some time you can always ask one of your teammates to sit down with you take a look at your code and sometimes uh, all you need is an outside view to find the mistake in general try to communicate with your teammates as much as possible because well this is a team competition and you should make the most of that if you're having trouble solving a problem Sometimes all it takes is you just need to sit down with your teammate and exchange ideas and maybe you can kind of solve the puzzle this way. If you need a piece of code for your solution that you're not familiar with writing, uh, you can ask your teammate to write it for you and you can collaborate this way. It's never wrong to ask your teammates for help and you should remember that. So the last stretch, the last hour of the contest is really important because that's your last opportunity to get anything done. And if you're lucky, you could get maybe three or four problems accepted. But in the worst case, if you spread your attention too much, 
you will get nothing accepted and that's pretty bad. So try to optimize for the worst case and uh, pick one or maybe two problems and concentrate on getting those accepted instead of trying to cover everything. Proper training schedule is very important for ICPC. Try to work out the best time for you and your teammates to have at least one training per week. If you're preparing for an important competition, you may even want to do two or three trainings per week. However, it's important to not overdo this. It's better to have a steady schedule instead of just doing a lot of trainings. In addition to team training, in a good team, each member works hard to become a better problem solver and a better programmer to improve the performance of well, themselves and their team as well. So to practice individually, there are lots of online competitions that you can take part in, like at Forces, Top Coder and Ad Coder. In total, uh, several competitions are held each week and it's best if you try to participate in as many as you can. Also, outside of that, there are lots of archives with practice problems that you can gradually work through and improve at your own pace. Like Cut Forces has lots of problems and some other archives as well. Find the best routine for you to practice and improve and just keep yourself immersed in problem solving and well, you will get better in no time. After you finish the competition with a team or on your own, it's good to look back at the problems that you didn't solve and figure out what went wrong. Was it a technique that you didn't know or did you just spend too much time on other problems and maybe you can improve your efficiency in some way? Just have a discussion with your team members or think to yourself and it's good to practice on the problems that you didn't solve so that you can solve a similar problem if it appears in the future. People often ask which topic should I learn first? Should it be dynamic programming or string algorithms or greedy algorithms? It's hard to answer in general because everyone knows different things. But I think the best course of action is to just train as normal and if you find a problem that's on your level, but it features an algorithm or a technique that you don't know yet, then it's a good opportunity to read up, watch a lecture, read an explanation, solve a few problems on that algorithm or data structure. And if you do it this way, it will, you will learn more as you grow and it will be overall just, just a balanced improvement. ICPC can certainly help you uh, to acquire a lot of skills, get a head start on your career in industry, in academics. However, the most important reason why we are all doing this is just because it's fun, right? You're having a good time with your teammates. You share the interest for solving good problems, hard problems, and you may sometimes get frustrated that maybe you're not performing well enough or you don't improve fast enough, but just focus on having fun, solve the problems and the improvement, the progress, it will all come naturally if you spend enough time on that. There are lots of resources online that can help you prepare for ICPC competitions. For example, Cut Forces has a huge amount of information and also Cut Forces Gyms has lots of ICPC format contests that you can practice on. ICPC Catty's archive has lots of problems, including previous World Finals problems. Probably one of your local universities has an archive or an online judge with problems from your previous local or regional competitions. Just search or ask online and you can find 
A lot of resources that can keep you practicing for quite a few years. ICPC and programming competitions have a great community and you're lucky to be a part of it. So make the best of communicating with other teams, other participants. Get to know other ICPC teams in your university or in your region. Maybe have a chat or a conversation where you can talk to each other about problems and learn from each other at times. Remember that you are never isolated if you like programming competitions and it helps you with your motivation if you keep yourself immersed in the community. Having a coach for ICPC is important. You can ask them about giving lectures to you or arranging some lectures to you. Uh, they can help you with, for example, finding a room in the university where you can train or, or with the camps that you can attend to get better. If you don't yet have a coach, you can try asking your professors if they're interested to help you or past competitors from your university. A coach, if nothing else, is just someone who cares and willing to spend time to help you improve and having that is a really good thing.